right, guys, Captain Brian here, episode 4-0, hold cast, sit here and hold fast, in Malaysia, just left Singapore, like I said before, it's amazing, heading towards Phuket via Pancor in Lunawaki, Lankawi, Lun something, I don't know, it's north. <laughs> now, all seriousness, I'm leaving to Pancor in about a week and then heading up to uh, Phuket, so today we're going to talk about comms and forecasting. Um, I'm going to preface this with saying all this is based on my own personal experience, which I have quite a bit of. Uh, everybody does this differently. I'm just going to present you with some facts in the way that I did it. And then, uh, you know, based on your budget and all that, you can do it your way, my way, his way, her way. I don't know. Um, yeah, so basically I did Los Angeles up the one to Fuka, down to Seattle, and back about 2,000 miles with just a Garmin inReach uh, in my phone, which doesn't work very well. Once you get to the Pacific Northwest, your phone doesn't work at all. Um, and then I did from L.A., Mexico, Polynesia, over to Fiji, up to Marshall Islands, over to Palau for about a year and a half with the inReach and the Iridium Go, uh, which is a must. You can't cross without someone to get forecasting. Um, and then for about seven months now, I've had the Starlink. So basically, all that's to say is that I've had one, I've had the other, I've had them both. I know where they all shine, where there's some redundancies, um, and what's worked for me and what costs what. Um, and just let's just jump in on that part, just from go. Um, this is my budget for about two years, leaving Los Angeles till I got to Indonesia, till I got to Sarong. Um, which is in uh, Papua New Guinea on the west side. So it was $159 a month for my Verizon American cell phone bill, plus $10 a day per two gigabytes when I turn my phone on another country, which is insane. It's, it's, it's six times that a phone card would be in another country. The reason I have this on is um, I've had the number forever. And the nice thing about an American cell phone plan, most places when you land somewhere, it's going to work. It might be expensive, but if it's an emergency, it's going to work. So that's the reason. Um, and then also, I want to keep my phone number. I had, had it as a business line since the 90s. Uh, I have now since ported that number to Google Voice. Um, I chose Google Voice because it's free. And the only thing I need that number to do is to receive a text message from WhatsApp to verify my phone number. That's all I care about. I just need some, something to hold hold it in place. It cost me no money. I wanted to use Skype, frankly, but they don't do that. So there you go. Um, so that's the phone. Uh, $69 a month for my Garmin inReach. That's the unlimited plan. That also includes my Garmin inReach. Sends the KM, KML data to the predict wind tracking page to track me. Uh, $160 a month, I think it's $169 actually, for the Iridium Go airtime plan. This is basically the cell phone service for the Iridium Go. $200 a month for Starlink. Drop in the bucket. That thing is invaluable. I mean, it's the, it's the best word to do it. There's no version of doing this without it now. Um, $499 a year or about $41 a month. That's the offshore app for Predict Win in order to download the gribs and view them kind of in their GUI. Uh, and then $0 single sideband radio. We'll get to that later too. <laughs> so that gives you about, I was paying $629 a month for two years to get weather and talk to people ashore for two years. So do the math on that. It's a lot of money that I spent to have that stuff on the boat. Now, for the first six months, I just wanted to have everything I possibly could because, you know, it's new to me. I'm offshore. The first trip is like 4,000 miles across the ocean. So, you know, you really just want to, like, cover all your bases. My mother was super nervous. So she's like, I don't care. You guys get everything. <laughs> um, but now, you know, I probably at least a year ago I could have pared this down. But, you know, I, fortunately I had I have some money. Um so it's not that great big of a deal, but now it's the point to where, you know, it's it's just obnoxious to spend $6,000 a year on forecasting and um, communication. 
So on that note, we're going to dive right in. First up, we're going to talk about SIM cards and eSIM cards. These are kind of more for the people like me that are going country to country, continent to continent, and doing some big time cruising. But it's interesting information if you're interested. Um, I do have now, so I have an 8 Plus does not allow for an eSIM card, an 11 Pro Max that does allow for a SIM card, and a 15 Pro Max, which does allow for an eSIM card. When I first left, I only had the 8. So um, it did not allow for an eSIM card. So basically, the minute I got to Mexico from L.A., I'm grabbing a phone card in Ensenada. You know, I need a phone card right now. And then when I get to Polynesia, I need a phone card right now. And then when I get to American Samoa, and then Samoa, and then Fiji, and then Carabas, and then Marshall Islands. Every country, it was a mad dash to go find a SIM card. And the thing is, one... The plans don't vary. You buy basically cash cards worth a certain amount, and that covers that data cost, right? So if you're getting a smaller one, a bigger one, a middle one, doesn't matter. You're just buying cash cards are the equivalent to pay off of the data. The other problem, which is a, ended up being like a Lord of the Rings sort of like a, basically, so they don't take cash ever. For, for those phone cards. They never take cash. I'm sorry, they never take credit. So you got to find cash, okay? Well, now you're, you've left Mexico where you had pesos and dollars. Now you're in Polynesia. So you need to go find an ATM machine to get their money. Um, and is your ATM machine going to work? Is it going to take your ATM card? Like it's a, uh, getting money in another country is the most nerve wracking. Every time I put my money, my debit card in an ATM machine, I'm just waiting for not to come out. Um, but it's a whole thing, right? So, and then when you want more data, you get to go buy more refill cards. If you leave and you're going somewhere far away, you get to buy a bunch of them so you have some for later. Um, like po French Polynesia specifically, when you leave Nukuhiva or, you know, wherever you check in there, you want to get a bunch of cards. So when you go down the Tomotos and everywhere else, the societies, you're going to have that everywhere. Um, it's just, it's a whole thing, right? So... Probably all cell phones within the last two or three generations is going to have the option to do an eSIM card. And they're great. You know, there's Airlo, um, Nomad, Holofly, and basically there's a bunch more too. Those are just the three that I use. But you just download the app of the one you want to use, pick the plan, hit like three buttons, and install the card, and you're good to go. That's it. And now you're using that. So not only did you pay with a credit card, which you can never do ever anywhere for, some, for for cards, but you can also refill it from the app on your phone, um, which is pretty fantastic. So obviously those are the way to go. Um, I think a big thing for me is personally, since I got Starlink, you know, I used to use a lot of data and spend a lot of money on phone cards and like on my phone bill because you're always using your phone. But I didn't have Starlink. So on my boat, I just had cards. And I just had cards to use with my laptop to tether. So I was using mass amounts of data. This is why I like when people complain about how expensive Starlink is. I'm like, dude, I used to spend like $400 a month on phone cards. Like, Starlink has saved me $200 a month easily. Because um, I'm using my phone on the boat 80% of the time. When I'm on land, you know, most of the time now when I sign up for a new card for a new country... I get like a gig. All I really care about is Google Earth, Google Maps, maybe a text every now and again, and that's about it. I, I don't really, you know, I'm not doing anything else on land that I would need a mass amount of data for. So that's how those work. One more thing to talk about with the phones. Uh, Qualcomm has a phone, and I know Android, there's a couple Android phones, and um, 14 and the 15 S iPhone, uh, they have the low bandwidth satellite communication that the InReach does or the Iridium Go does now. It's not as, um, you can't do as much, obviously. Um, I've not putted mine too much at this point because I'm kind of coastal cruising and I just got my 15S here not too long ago. Um, but it's worth noting that that technology, you can text someone with no cell service and with no Wi-Fi. 
in an emergency to get people to find you. I don't know. From what I read, it looks like it just calls the authorities. Like it calls, maybe it calls 911 and gives them your Latin lounge or whatever. Um, I have not looked into it that far yet, but is it worth buying a new $2,000 phone? Absolutely not. If you already have it in reach, it's the same thing. That would be silly. Um, I will say if you are traveling and you don't have a phone that takes an eSIM card and you use your phone for data, you might want to look into uh, upgrading or investing into a, a new phone. But that's all I got in there. That's SIM cards and eSIM cards. Next up, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk the, the Garmin inReach. Uh, the Garmin inReach is invaluable. It is truly invaluable. It is it is the sailor's best friend. It is the type of technology that there is simply no reason not to have on your boat. I would go as far as saying it's irresponsible to not have some sort of device like this. Um, it's $100 used, $300 new for the InReach Mini. There's four of the devices. They're all around the same cost. The other ones are actually cheaper. Um, and it's $14 a month. The battery lasts a year when it's turned off. I have one that just sits in my ditch bag. And it works anywhere on the planet. If I'm, I got my waterproof case. I have it clipped to me when I'm single-handed. It's with, it's clipped onto my vest when I'm on deck by myself. In case they fall off, I can, not only my personal locator will go off, but I can text people while I'm floating in the ocean watching my boat go away. Um, God forbid that ever, you know. But you're hiking in Fiji, you're hiking in Costa Rica in some thick jungle by yourself or with someone else, you break your leg five miles in. Again, the Bluetooth is amazing. It's always tethered to your phone, right? So there's no Wi-Fi to hook it up. It's just always connected. It's an app just like WhatsApp, just like iMessage. Um, you literally just open it and text. That's it. And it's low bandwidth. You know, it probably takes 10 minutes for the, the text to go through. It's 160 characters, SMX. And then, you know, it comes back. Uh, 10,000 miles up to sea. Not the other, really 10,000 miles up to sea, but, you know, a couple of thousand miles up to sea, whatever that looks like. Um, there's just simply at that cost, there's no reason not to have it. It's small. You can make it waterproof and it's dirt cheap and it stays charged forever. So, um, I do use mine now. Like I said in the, in the previous part of this, I do use my Garmin inReach to send my KML tracking data to predict wind for my predict wind tracking page. The Garmin inReach does have a tracking page. It's a hiking device. It's made to hike. The maps aren't good. It's not super friendly. It's not pretty. Um, it just doesn't, it's not, doesn't feel nautical. Um, it's not user friendly. Again, I just, it just doesn't, I pay for the predict one, predict one one because it just makes sense. It's easy. My family, my friends, there are people that keep tracking me. I want to make it as easy for them as possible. And it does not get any easier than the predict wind tracking page. Um, when I did, so I've reduced my, um, I've reduced my price or my cost per month subscription on this thing from $69.99 to $34 a month. The cheapest plan is $14 a month. It's 10 texts a month. That's the one I have in my ditch bag. Um, the $34 a month is the lowest one they have with unlimited tracking points to be sent. So I have to have that in order to get my predict win tracking. Um, I will say, just as a caveat, this thing does do weather, okay? I used mine to go, like I said, up the one to Fuca from L.A., down to Seattle, a couple thousand miles, uh, beating up the coast and then rolling down it. There's two ways to get weather on this. One is to just text people from it. Hey, what's my weather 100 miles ahead? When you send the text, when the person who receives it gets it, there's a, a hot link URL that takes you to a map that shows you the Latin launch. So it's super duper simple. So you don't have to like include all that in there. It's built into the text message. Um, I did this for the whole way up. I had a friend of mine. I was by myself on the boat. I had a friend of mine that was on shore. She's a wonderful sailor. She's been sailing forever. Uh, I shouldn't, she probably want me to say it that way, but um, she's really good with weather. She's just, she's just a sailor sailor. She's like my hero when it comes to sailing. And um, for this type of thing. I have like a mentor for racing and a mentor for cruising. Uh, and they're both amazing sailors. But basically, she'd be like, okay, 50 miles ahead, 20 miles ahead, 
14 knots, 20 knots. Maybe you want to go over, there's a high, there's a low, whatever, 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 that kind of thing. Um, there's not a lot of huge storms up there, like squalls and stuff like that. It just depends on the time of year, right? It just depends on the time of year you go up. Um, but a, a hurricane is not going to come kill you going north to the Pacific Northwest. The other way is, is that you use it the way it is. And what you can do is, within the app, you open up the app, which is super simple because it's Bluetooth, which is amazing. Open the app. I want to forecast here. 20 miles out. And I want to pay a dollar for the advanced marine forecast, which you have to do, or you don't... If you don't do that, you don't get um, the time between waves and gusts and, like, there's, like, two other things. So... Problem is, when you get this, okay, it gives me some information. It's not a map. It's just like a regular seven-day forecast you would see on the news for a place. It's only giving me the forecast for, like, that one spot. Well, that's not really great for me at 20 miles. Because, one, I'll be past that in four hours. Two, I don't know if it's a high over here, low over here, massive whatever. You know, I just, I want to know what's going on around me. So, what you could do, potentially, is pull several forecasts. They're a dollar each, though, and kind of make your own grid. Not very functional. Um, but it is there in a pinch, in an emergency. You can definitely get a forecast for a specific place. Mainly, this thing is for communication. And it's invaluable, irresponsible, not to have the boat. <laughs> Obviously, I don't mean that, but it's really... I, I know probably, I'm going to say, 200 boats since I left America. That like I've intimately spoken to, like had conversations with, talked about sailing, and not like intimately, but like you know what I mean. Um, Ninety-five percent of them have the inreach. Ninety-five percent. It's the redundancy for everything. So, but we'll get in the end. I'm gonna kind of recap and we'll go over the whole thing once I give you all the information. But just get your head thinking now. If you don't have one, uh, it's worth having. All right, guys, so look, Starlink is the thing's thing. It's the new thing. It's the the bee's knees, as the kids say. They probably don't say that, but um, it's irreplaceable in this boat at this point. Uh, with trip planning, forecasting, research, work, checking in and out of countries, I mean, it's just, and then a hundred other things. Entertainment, um, talking to my family back home, I can, like, I do video for a living. I do, I do, I'm a documentary filmmaker. So, like, I can upload and download massive files. I'm getting 100 up, 100 down all the time, everywhere I go, even at sea. So, like, it just, it opens the door to, like, I was supposed to do a, a four-year circumnavigation and be home in L.A. and figure my life out. Well, I got this now. I don't have to go home because this is, I was already living in the boat. This is my home. It's way cheaper to live in Asia. So, I'm in Asia right now. I'm in Malaysia. Or it's, my marina, it's, it's what, $16 a day, $14 a day for the slip fee. Uh, f a meal is like three bucks. Like, um, so it opens up all kinds of doors. It's absolutely wonderful. There's a bit of an existential issue, and I, and I, I say this. Some people laugh at me when I mention this, but I do think it's worth saying. You know, I'm 48. I'm right at the edge of, like, you know, I don't know how to check my email. What's an iPhone to, like, you know... I know all the technology. And I do because that's what I work for a living. That's kind of what I did. Uh, and the reason I say that is I think with the younger generation, I left L.A. to get away from technology, to get away from the news, get away from streaming every day and swiping every day and online dating every day and just all these brutal things that were just sucking the life energy out of me. I was on my phone like 12 hours a day, right? Because I worked from home. My job, I work like, you know, a month every three months. So... When I left, it took me about two months to really get, like, in a good place with, like, not having any of that. Because you don't. You have phone cards, and they're incredibly expensive. You can't just download 300 gigabytes a day. Like, you have to, like, you know, watch. So it took me a couple months to get used to that. But then when I got to Indonesia two years in, when I was kind of fine with it, I found myself, when I installed the, the Starlink to, like, I'm on Instagram swiping. I'm on Facebook swiping. Netflix is going in the background. I'm downloading just, it's just, I very quickly fell back into that because it's just so easy and they make it that easy and pretty and shiny for you to do that. So look, that may be a thing for just people under 30, people under 40, under 50, maybe no one, 
Um, well, that's not, I, actually, I know about four or five people that have the same problem. So I know I'm not the only technophobe or techphobe or whatever they call it. Um, but it is invaluable for what it provides on the boat. Now, I want to, there is a downside to Starlink. And I really, people need to hear this. You know, I have friends that are like, I, I'm like, you know, it's, it's not perfect. Like, well, I sailed across the Atlantic and it was, I had service the whole time. Awesome. I sailed across the Indian Ocean and for 50 days it never didn't work. Great. I'm sitting here in Malaysia every day it rains, and for three hours a day, it doesn't work. It does not cut through the clouds. Uh, this is not an epically big deal in the grand scheme of things. Rarely when you're at sea, you're like, oh my God, I need internet right this second. Uh, if you're rushing to pull a forecast a thousand miles offshore and you need it in like a minute, there are way other larger problems at hand um, than that. So, Besides the clouds, and this is the part that I really do want people to understand, well, all of it, understand all of it, <laughs> but um, the dish is not made for the outdoors. I mean, it's not made for ocean air, ocean water. It's made to camp. It's made for an RV. It's called the RV version, right? So if salt water gets in the dish, gets a crack, it's going to die. If the plug comes out a little bit, it unseats itself in the bottom, and ocean air gets up in those ports, it's going to kill the USB-C cable, as well as the input port into Dishy McDishy Pants. The cable's 50 feet going through my boat. It's just RJ45 with a really terrible sheaf around it, which means it's basically phone cable, but doesn't have that really nice, thick Cat5 cable. Sheath, it has this flimsy, soft thing around it, right? So that now makes 15 turns before it gets to my boat. Now, I zip-tied as much as I can, but when my boat's bashing, going into the swell, that's moving. It's, it's room. It's a place for the chafe. If it's gonna, is it going to chafe? Probably not, but it's there. It plugs into the modem. The cable could break off where it plugs in the modem. The connection in the modem could break. The modem could break. The power cable from the modem down to the uh, inverter could break. My, I'm getting DC hooked up like next week, but right now it's AC. If the inverter goes out, no dishy, Okay. And there's about 30 ways to break the inverter on the boat. So there's 20 failure points that make Starlink a novelty. It's an amazing novelty. It does an amazing amount of things. You know, I, I have people like, I'm like, you know, have your, your, uh, your iridium go, right? This is my forecasting. I do not leave shore for a thousand miles, depending on Starlink, to give you my forecasting. I might use it, but if it breaks, I'm gonna have this, because this is definitely gonna work. Now look, these break too, for sure. I mean, I, <laughs> it's my second one, um, but it's all in one thing. It's less likely to break with smashing, or water, or wind, because it just sits in one place. You know what I mean? So. I'm not saying don't use it. It's, it's great to have. It's way faster than that by like, I don't know. It's the most powerful thing on the boat. It replaces the chart plotter. It replaces all the instruments, everything. It replaces everything. You could have that in an iPad, theoretically, in sail with your boat, except for the, the radar. Well, radar does Wi-Fi too. Um, but you don't. Because if that goes out and you're a thousand miles offshore, you're going to be in really bad shape. So, and again, we're going to go over redundancies here in the end. Uh, I'm spending two hundred dollars a month on mine. I have the global plan. It's registered in Los Angeles, which means anywhere on the planet I go with my boat, that is going to work. Anywhere, water or land. Um, I could switch to the regional plan and send, save like fifty dollars a month. I basically would have to deactivate the dish, sell it to another email address, and then register it to an email in Asia. Now in Asia, Vietnam, Philippines, Tha uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, I probably said one of those twice, but they're all considered Asia. So like that's a region because it'd be impossible. There's so many islands. So basically I can move it here and pay $140 a month. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It works fine now. Um, they just, I think what a lot of people don't think about, because it's out of mind, is there's a nautical version for Starlink that's very expensive a month and very expensive for the dish that are made for this environment. 
that are very expensive. They're coming down. It's like $500, $300 now. It's kind of coming down. But um, the way that we use ours, if you're not familiar, if you go offshore, 15 miles off, I have my global plan. Anywhere that land comes out of water, it works perfect. Up to 15 miles off that land, more or less. At that point, it turns off. It, no it, it notifies me. It says, hey, we see you're on the water. We see you're moving. Toggle priority mode, and we'll turn back on. So you toggle priority mode. I think it's $2 a gig or whatever it is. Um, and it comes back on in like 15 minutes. The nice thing is it never loses signal. So you don't have to remember to do that before the Wi-Fi goes. Even after the Wi-Fi goes, the dish is still hooked up. It's always hooked up. It's just not allowing you to have service because you're, I don't know, out of your range as it were. So I just think at some point this is going to come to a head to where they're paying a lot and we're not paying a lot. You know, so I, and we're not that many. I mean, look, it's probably 20,000 boats. I don't, I don't know what the number is, but it can't be too, many, too much more than that um, that's moving around. So I think at this point right now they just want money because satellites are expensive and they're putting like 40,000 of them up. Um, at some point, though, that's going to either this is going to go away or this is going to go away. That's just the nature of the way it is. You can't have two plans doing the same thing. It would be stupid and inefficient. And, um, you know, if you look at the rest of his companies, they are not inefficient. So um, that's all I got on Starlink. Look, I'm, and I'm not trying to bash it. It's amazing. And look, it's amazing. It's absolutely revolutionary on your boat the things you can now do that you were not able to do before you pull a forecast in like eight seconds that thing takes like two hours you know it's just it's amazing video calls in the middle of the ocean you live streaming in the middle of the ocean for your friends and or your family that want to see where you're at i mean it's just re and you get to a new island or a new country the whole way there you're researching where everything's at i mean it's just i don't have to go through all things but look it's it is invaluable in so many ways, but just understand its limitations. It should not be without a backup. It can be your primary way to forecast. It can be your primary way to talk to people using WhatsApp or whatever through data, but it is not meant to not have a backup. Again, the inReach is the perfect backup for Starlink. That's what I have. 200 for the Starlink, 30 for the, 30 for the inReach, 230 a month. I am fully covered no matter where I go. Um, all right, so look, next up, we're just, we'll keep working our way down here. I hope you guys are finding this interesting. You have no way to give me feedback, so I'm going to assume I'm killing it. <laughs> um, all right, guys, so next up is the Iridium Go. This thing is not the bee's knees. It is slow and clunky, but it does what it does, and it does it well. The one thing it needs to do, it does well. It's slow. Yes, it's meant to be slow. It's not Starlink. It's not 100 down. It's not super fast. Um... I personally don't use anything that has to do with the app. You know, the biggest problem with this device is, is it's Wi-Fi. So to check your text message every time you want to check for a text message, unlike the uh, inReach that's Bluetooth and is always connected and will notify you like WhatsApp or iMessage, this thing you have to log into it via Wi-Fi, which Wi-Fi on the phone hates logging into a device that does not, it just it's just logging into a device, nothing with internet. So it hates that. So once you get there, then you have to log into the actual app itself. It takes forever to load. It fails half the time. Um, I know people that have had good results with it. Me personally, I have just not. The phone is useless, as are all sat phones, unless you're in a real emergency. Um, if you don't know, now you know. You can try, but it's just not worth the, um, worth the effort there. Look, it's made to pull grips and do weather routing. And it does it really well. Um, I don't use my phone. I don't use my iPad. I use my MacBook Pro. I have the offshore app downloaded onto here. Turn up the screensaver. Turn up the power save. Grab like a hundred kilobyte gnarly huge swatch of water that I want to look at for the next two days. And I'm going to let it go. I put in the v with a bunch of pillows around it. And just let it... It takes four or five hours. I... Again... There should be, if you're a thousand miles offshore, no reason why that would be a problem. Like, oh my God, I need a forecast right this second. Well, if there's a cyclone close to you, probably went at the wrong time. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
it works for what it is. Here's the thing. It's expensive. It's $169 a month for the, the plan and $4.99 a year uh, to use the app. So, yes, this is very, very expensive and prices out a lot of people. I know a lot of people that just simply can't afford that, um, which I get. It's a lot of money. So, in a minute here, we'll talk about some other options. For my money right now, mine's turned off because I'm not doing big passages. Uh, when I do do a big passage, I have the cards. You get, when you turn it off for Predict Wind service, you have to have Predict Wind SIM cards to reactivate it, unlike with other companies. Important to know that. Once you turn it off, you need cards or you can't turn it back on. And you're not going to find cards anywhere but in America or Europe. So just know that. Um, my thought is basically if I'm going somewhere more than four days, okay. I can forecast four days relatively. Like, I'll see highs, I'll see lows. You should be able to make a safe forecast to get from point A to point B on land for a four-day passage and be relatively okay. You might get some squalls, but you can't see those in the forecast anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Anything over four days, I reactivate that. Well, I'm going to cross the, the, um, the Indian Ocean in like three months. I will definitely turn that back on. To be, oh, it will be a redundancy to the Starlink. I'll definitely pull forecasts from the Starlink, unless you know I'm 40 days in and like at that point I've spent $400 downloading useless stuff because I was bored in the Starlink. Well, at that point, I know what that costs because I've already paid for it. So maybe I'll just pull forecasts from that. But it gives me options. That dies, I have this. This dies, I have that. At the end of the day. I have my inReach, which is the you know redundancy of redundancies. And if that dies, single sideband radio. So, but for the most part, all I need now is Starlink and the uh, Garmin inReach. That's all I need. And you know, and just and look, if I do a passage, it's only going to be they prorate it, so I'm like a week or two weeks, and then turn it on, turn it off again. Um, and this is free, so. Um, I lost my place. Yeah, so basically, I turn off the Iridium Go at 169 out the door. I lowered the plan from the professional from 499 to 249. 249 a month, a year, is the lowest it can be to have the Predict Win tracking page. Again, if you don't know what that looks like, find a friend that has one. Uh, they are really, really pretty. You can blog on it. shows weather on it. It's very easy to navigate. It makes sense, and it's just pretty. Like, it's very... If you're giving it to people from work, if you're giving it to people that are friends, it just, it looks, it looks sleek. And that's worth, you know, 20 bucks a month for me. And my mother stares at it, so that's a whole other thing. All right, so next up, we got the single sideband radio. Um, tried and true. This is the Centurion. This thing's been around since like 1925 or something, or 1927 or something like that. People, the military's been using it forever. Sailors have been using it forever. Recreational people have used it forever. Um, doing now what they did then. You know what I mean? I It's like a horse and buggy. Yes, it worked in the Roman times with spikes. We still use them now without spikes. And it works just as well. Uh, the only thing is, look, we invented the Chevy. A little faster. A little prettier. A little easier to use. Um, definitely more expensive. <laughs> but, uh, you know... That's the deal. Like, I just, like, I have a friend right next to me right now that uh, their primary use, uh, way to get forecasting and communication is their single sideband radio. It's, it's awesome. If it works for you, it works. That's great. I think that there are not as many adopters as there used to be, which is going to turn into a problem down the line because this thing depends on a net of people in order to keep it going. Um, it is free, which is great. If you have a license, um, if you buy a boat and there's one in it, great. It's free. If you buy a boat and there's not one in it and you're trying to save money, well, there's a lot of equipment involved with this. Uh, it's not super easy to use until you know how to use it, then it is. Um, so is it worth installing one of these in a newer boat? Probably not. You know, I would probably go towards the inReach or go towards... The Iridium Go or the Starlink or, you know, there are more options too. There's more freeware. There's a bunch of other things out here. This is just what I personally use. And what I have found over the past two years and the builders I've talked to 
is they all kind of use some sort of variation of what I'm doing. They all die laughing when it comes to uh, when it comes to what I was spending. But um, yeah, so look, it works fine. It does the job. It's just a matter of you know. I think it's a. I think there are people that just started out doing it using this because this technology is ever evolving. Obviously, you know, it was different in the '80s. It was different in the '90s. Um, if you've been using this for 30 years and you're out in the ocean and it's been working fine and it doesn't cost you any money, well, obviously there's no reason to change that. The only thing that I would say is for people that are looking to get into this, uh, mine works fine. I know how to use it. It works great. Um, is have a backup. Have a Garmin inReach. $14 a month. $100 for the unit or used or like 300, uh, 300 in the store. It just... You got to have a redundancy. I mean, look, if you're 25 miles offshore, this doesn't matter. Your cell phone's probably going to work. Or you'll drift eventually to where your cell phone works. This is more for, look, if you're 100 miles, 200 miles, 500 miles, 1,000 miles. The further you get out, the more beefy, you know, stuff you need, obviously. It just makes sense. There's no reason. I, all of my videos, I say the same thing. It's about keeping you, your crew, and your boat safe. That's the idea. The job of a captain is to mitigate risk. And mitigating risk, you know is having the right tools for the right job at the right time in the right place. So that's basically all I got for the single sideband radio. Um, so basically I went from $30 a month, no, I went to $30 a month for the eSIM, $34.99 a month for the Garmin inReach, $200 a month for the Starlink, ain't going nowhere. Uh, $24 a month for, for the predict wind forecasting, which is $249 a year from the professional down to the standard plan. This is the offshore app, which I can still use with internet. Even if I have that, if I pay for the app, I can pull forecast with the Starlink through Predict Win and get the weather routing. It also includes the uh, tracking page. So, uh, but that's all I got. You know, if you guys have any other info, let me know. I, I'm down to learn. I taught, I taught at college for a lot of years, and I kind of quit my life and just jumped in a boat and sailed away 20,000 miles. And I've been learning as I go. I've met so many wonderful people that have helped me along the way and that I've helped along the way. And, you know, it's just such a great community of, of folks. So uh, I hope people get something out of this. Actually, one more. While I'm, while I'm here, um, I didn't even think about this, but this is like an extra little bonus thing. This is a piece of paper. <laughs> uh, basically, this is a contact list that I laminated for me, but it's not just a contact list, so don't be fooled. One of these is glued to the head door on the outside, which is the first thing you see when you walk down my companionway, is this sign. So basically, I'll just read it to you. So emergency contact information for Holdfast. That's my boot. Captain Brian, Captain's name, Brian Hathaway, and my phone number, WhatsApp, it's on WhatsApp. My email, my Instagram, that's all my info. Boat emergency contact. I am a 2006 Hunter 44DS. I'm white, 44 feet or 13.5 meters, single masted sailboat with gray trim. My Iridium Go text to text and call and email. The Garmin inReach, or yeah, the Garmin inReach phone number. Remember, that will be on me because I have that clipped to me when I'm by myself. My satellite email that so goes to my Iridium Go right there. The boat's equipped with AAS, VHF, and DSC calling. And there's the MMSI for that. The emergency beacon IDs, which is my, uh, the EPIRBs, as well as the personal locators. All numbers are listed right here. I have a four-man regatta ISO hydrostatically deployed life raft, highly visible green canopy. My documentation number for the U.S. Coast Guard. My hull number the URL for my tracking page so you can like find it. Cause what happens is if I get off, I have the inReach on me. The tracking is now tracking me, not the boat because it's clipped to my head or my vest probably, probably not my head. And then the last thing is my, my, my mom and my dad's phone number in both their emails. I also have right here is my will, which is glued right here. Uh, I'm by myself on the boat by myself. If someone, if I, you know, if I kick the bucket in, I don't know, Kasserai. I want them to be able to like. If you just lift this, if you just lift this up, I have four documents that are gl that are glued. They're not taped. They're glued to the bottom. They're laminated, um, and they're very just 
stuff that would people would need if something happened to me. So if I fall off my boat, if they find my boat in the middle of the ocean, they're looking for these numbers, they're looking for these, they're looking for that that life raft, they're looking for, you know, I'm just giving them information to help me. Also, and a reason this is very important as well, my crew that I bring on, give them this. So if they're nervous, if it's a girl and she's nervous about being on a boat with a boy, or if it's a boy and her parent or his parents are nervous with him just being at sea, I just give them this. There is a hundred ways to contact me here and find me. There's literally there's five phone numbers and three emails and a tracking and two tracking pages. So it's just a good thing to have. Again, I'll post this. I'll put this up on the screen while I'm talking about it. <laughs> um, but you should really, if you're doing any long passages, uh, if you're by yourself or you have crew, if you get hurt, you know, in a foreign country, nobody knows you or anything about you. And they can't get in your phone because it's locked. So you'll basically be in a third world emergency room you know, like Gilligan's Island, like coconuts being pumped into you or something. And no one's going to know who to call. But I'll put this on the screen. So that's all I got. I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Love talking about these things. Um, it's just, I love boating. I love boating. So episode 40, hold cast, hold fast in Malaysia. Heading to Phuket. I got like three of these or I'm doing that one thing. I'm going to Phuket. Going to Phuket via Pancor. Um, get on the water. As soon as possible and for long as possible. That's my suggestion. Bye.